pregnancy. Um, my pregnancy jury uh, actually started earlier part of our marriage, but unfortunately, my first pregnancy uh, failed. And uh, yeah, that actually that that experience made us realize na we want to have a baby now when we lost the first pregnancy. So Sigidi is actually an answer to you. <laughs> so we waited for two years. We started in uh, late 2012 and then I got ready in December mm. 2014. <laughs> so I fear that it was going to be or we can do something that we can be sure. Siya. So we were considering other you know, uh, ways like mga IVF mga or IUI. Then come late October, no, October 2014, I said, I'm stop trying. I said, I'm going to be like, Hindi pa gano'n pag lagi ka nag-expect every month. So, may tapos, kawin na natin January. Sige, kawin na natin yung idea. So, October to December, I was working on it. I was contacting na uh, someone, ganyan. Mm. Tapos, aalis na kami ng January. Dapat, I even received the medicine also for, para masimula na yung idea. Biglang nabuntis ako yung December. So, yay! <laughs> Natural <laughs> One thing that I can think of, siguro, is watching my my diet. Kasi, uh, mayroon akong gestation ng diabetes eh. Yun lang, pero yung mga when it comes to symptoms, parang it's not as, ano ka, kasing lakang problema, like, what I hear from other mothers. Highlights, madami, lahat ng development ni Gidi sa loob ng chunk of like, first. Heart, first heartbeat, first time you heard his heartbeat, yung iikot siya, ganyan, tapos nakita mo kompleto yung fingers. <laughs> Lahat, pati mga kicks niya, ang inside, mga gano'n, yun yung highlight sa akin. So, totoo lang, even before I got married, alam ko na yung cord life. Because of my sister, my sister is uh, an OB. Kasi at the same time, she's a cord life mom. So, sabi ko yung sabi ko. Cord life ka, sabi na. Tapos, I have friends also who are cord life mom. So, highly recommended na siya talaga sa amin. I would, and since it was highly recommended to me, I have to say na I would highly recommend it to them also. And then, it, hindi naman siya, uh, kasi sometimes, mga science, parang feeling mo, hirap-hirap. Itibihin ko anong mangyayari sa kanya eh. But, it helped na we met uh, one of your Representative. We, we met one of your representatives and they explained to us. Although before meeting them, nagbabasa basa na ako. Eh. I check I check your website. Cha kahit before pa naman. Although hindi siya thorough na inexplain sa akin ng mga kakilala ko. Pero one thing na na may mention sa akin yung mga diseases na malaking tulong do pagkakailangan kasi yung lahat ng bagay nung no, maikip mo yung umbilical cord. One of the things that I like about what Cord Life offers is that uh, it's not only my son who will benefit from it, but also my family, me, my parents, even grandparents of my son. And uh, I like that it was expressed to us also the intention of Cord Life to um, help my family find a match just in case we don't It's a huge... It, it's a huge investment if you think about it, if you look at the prices, di ba parang yun. But I, it's easy also to to recommend it to others because takot siyempre sila, ay mga mahal, mahal, mahal. Pero sabi ko, uh, parang not, do, do not worry about it because meron sila doon close na they would refund just in case na hindi kayo, hindi makakulit. Di ba kasi minsan dito nakakakulit talaga yung moms na ano. <laughs> Cord blood. Hi, I'm Chef Agnes Borromeo. I'm a chef instructor at the Center for Asian Culinary Studies in San Juan. I was invited today to make these dishes healthy for moms, pregnant moms and the baby. And um, this is the dishes I chose were because, number one, they're easy to prepare. Number two, also, they're very filling. 
and also rich in vitamins and nutrients. When you're pregnant, you need certain vitamins and nutrition, uh, certain nutritional food to eat. So I tried to put them in in the ingredients in the dishes that I made today. The first dish I did was a chicken salad. Um, Chicken salad is a favorite, I think, of Pinoy's. And um, aside from being very filling, it, I added some fruits and um, walnuts into it because um, to add some nutrition into it, especially for pregnant moms, because walnuts as an ingredient has is high in omega-3 fatty acids. So it's really good for brain development for the baby. And of course, vegetables and the lean chicken. It's filling, it's protein. So it's a good snack or a good meal. So in the version I did, it was uh, just as a salad. But add, you can easily make it into a sandwich. Just add some bread or add a little bit of mayonnaise if you like. Place it into bread and you have a good. So this is the chicken salad that I did. Um, this is the salad portion. So you have grapes, you have apples, you have the chicken that's lean, chicken breast. And instead of a heavy dressing, we had the uh, uh, vinaigrette, apple cider, and um, Dijon mustard. So hopefully the pregnant moms out there would like this dish. So this is the tzatziki and the kofta, beef kofta. You can use lamb, you can use beef. For this one, it's lean beef, lean round. And also, um, this is one of my favorite dishes. It's very flavorful, yet very healthy because of the yogurt in the dressing. So I hope they would like this dish. Easily, you can use this as for lunch, as a meal, or even snack. The tzatziki, the dip, can be also served with pita bread. So I hope you'll enjoy this one. This is my seared, um, pan-grilled actually, pan-grilled salmon on a bed of zucchini, Asian style, with a teriyaki glaze on it. And I sprinkled some sesame seeds and some chopped um, leeks or spring onions on top. This is a very simple salmon dish. Salmon is very rich in omega-3 fatty acids, which at the about eight months to nine months of pregnancy will help the brain development of your baby. So use salmon, and this is one of the ways you can do it with teriyaki. To the pregnant moms out there, I hope from the demo today you realize that cooking healthy is very easy. You don't have to go through the fast food way of cooking or in eating, or you don't have to buy prepared or canned stuff. You can make healthy food for you and your baby easily at home. Thank you for viewing the recipes today. If you're interested in the recipes themselves, please check at the site. The recipes are posted there. And check back with us for more future healthy dishes for pregnant moms and babies. We are happy to be joined by Dr. Becky Singson, an ob who practices in three major hospitals. The Makati Medical Center, the Asian Hospital and Medical Center in Alabang, Muntinlupa, and the St. Luke's Bonifacio Global City Medical Center, where she was the first chairman who organized the OBGYN department in the first three years since it opened. During her leadership, St. Luke's Global City developed the fastest growing gynecologic robotics program in Southeast Asia, had the most complete perinatal services in the whole country, and set up the only hospital-based water birthing facility in the country. She is the charter president of the Rotary Club of Makati Das Marinas and writes articles related to women's health and other female issues. Again, thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Tara Becky. My pleasure. Patty and I are happy cord life moms yes. to Tristan and Theo and we really hope to encourage other moms too. Okay, Dr. Tara, maybe you can explain for all the moms who are completely clueless out there, what are stem cells? I'm happy to be here, to be with you, and to help you, to guide you in this um, uh, knowledge on stem cells and cord blood banking. Stem cells are actually primitive cells uh, which can differentiate into either cells, tissues, or any organ of the body. Mm -hmm. So when does cord blood banking come into the picture? Like what is it in a nutshell, especially for moms who are moms and dads who are considering it for their you know, newborn? Well, cord blood banking is the process of collecting uh, cord blood after the delivery of the baby and putting that in a cord blood bank for future use. So Doc, can you tell us what are the sources of stem cells? Actually, there are several sources of stem cells. Uh, one of them is from the embryo and this is the most controversial 
There is also the peripheral blood. You can actually extract the uh, peripheral blood and then uh, get the stem cells from there. Another source is the bone marrow where you can also um, extract the stem cells. And the most um, easily obtainable source is the cord, umbilical cord, because it's something we usually just throw away with a placenta, yes. but it's a very rich source of stem cells. Also, that's why it's perfect when you give birth. That's, that's the right. timing is so important. Yes. Now, a lot of moms and dads are concerned, is it a legal process? Like, do they have the, the government and the church approval as well? Yes, it is legal. In fact, the Department of Health has issued an um, administrative order declaring that the use of stem cells from umbilical cord source is not controversial. What is controversial is the one derived from the embryo because you have to destroy the embryo in order to access the stem cells. So even the, uh, the Catholic, uh, the CBCP, yes. Episcopalian Commission, has uh, declared that uh, it, there is nothing immoral about using stem cells derived from umbilical source. Hey Doc, so I understand there are different types of cord blood banks. Can you tell us about this? Well, there's really just two types. Uh, there's a public cord blood bank and there's the private cord blood bank. With a public cord blood bank, it's actually the, the government that sets it up. So there's a pool where uh, all women who give birth, uh, all, their, all their blood derived from the umbilical cord is sent to that uh, cord blood bank for public use. No? So anybody can access the, the, co the cord blood that, be that belongs there if they find the match. But the chances of you finding a match in the general population is like finding a needle in a haystack. It's like one is to a hundred thousand. So that's why there is value in private cord blood banking because uh, number one, you, the baby owns it. The family takes care of uh, maintaining the, um, the, the, blood, the blood in the bank. And whenever you need it, then you have one that where, where you have the, the proper matching for. Like, for example, even the grandparents or the parents or a sib can, can actually find a better matched cord blood compared to finding one in the general That's population. Right. So definitely when it comes to cord blood, blood banking, yes. private does have its, it's advantages. And advantages. That's right. Actually, Kelly, for me personally, that's why doc, we wanted to really get into it. Was because my own doctor, my own ob me, Dr. Akora, said, you know what, it's something to explore. Mm -hmm. She didn't really pressure me about it, but it's nice to have information about something, right? That's right. One of the reasons why I signed up with Cord Life is because it's a trusted and very transparent company. Yeah, they were very upfront yeah, with everything. And I think they've been here for 14 years, so you could tell that it's a trusted brand. And I, I also noticed that before it was in Singapore. Now That's it's right. here. Right. That makes it so accessible. Just in case you know you have, you need to to use it for yes. your son or for your family. It's yeah. right here. So the facility is here in the Philippines, which makes it much more accessible. Like what you said, a lot of parents say, "No, it's so expensive. It's a bit of a splurge." Mm -hmm. But when you think of the latest technology that goes into caring for whatever specimen they're keeping. Mm -hmm. then you understand, okay, it's worth the investment. Exactly. And one thing I like about Cord Life is that they have a guarantee or oh, insurance. Yes, Just in case anything goes wrong, mm -hmm. they are willing to pay back whatever yeah. losses. So or at least you're sure that, okay, they know what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that they have a guarantee for a refund really helps. Exactly. And for me, I think that the one thing that really sold me was mm -hmm. the stories of mm -hmm. other families, other children who benefited from it. So I guess 
as every parent, you want to pray for the best for your mm-hmm. child that they won't get sick, that they won't have to use it. But it's just nice to have the peace of mind that you have cord life to support you if anything goes wrong. Exactly. Like for Tristan, I always want to have that insurance or security that I know that in case he'll need it in the future, it's there. Or in case my whole family needs That's it. Right. That's very it important. Can be for the whole family to share. <laughs> so Doc, what diseases are treatable with stem cells? Well, some of the diseases treatable with stem cells are some blood dyscrasias like blood cancers, uh, namely leukemias, and then some solid tumors like retinoblastomas and neuroblastomas, as well as um, non-malignant blood disorders as well, uh, like the thalassemias, aplastic anemias, and also certain immunologic disorders as well as metabolic disorders are all treatable with stem cells. How about what are the other diseases that are being studied right now in relation to stem cells? There are many other applications being studied for the use of stem cells. Like for example, diabetes. No? There's so many people with diabetes yeah, and they're actually... Philippines are actually very high. Software, yeah. Because of our high consumption of sugar and carbohydrates. So <clears throat> they're looking into stem cell therapy to correct that. As well as people who develop spinal cord injuries. Um, you can actually regenerate the spine using stem cells. Um, these are all experimental. I've seen um, even um, corneal transplants using stem cells, regenerating the, the, the cornea using stem cells or even um, myocardial infarct because part of the heart muscle becomes inactive so they can regenerate the muscle fibers using stem cells. Even um, traumatic brain injuries, you know, you can regenerate the brain tissue using stem cells. There's so many applications, even Parkinson's. So they're able to produce dopamine again using stem cells in the brain. So it's, it's you know, that's why I say uh, it's good to bank the cord uh, blood right now because you never know where the technology will take you years from now. And it won't only affect your child, it can affect the other members of the family yeah, as well. The whole clan. Yeah. Alright Doc, what are the different types of cells that can be harvested from the umbilical cord line? Actually, aside from the stem cells that you collect in the cord, uh, in the cord blood, you can actually get other types of stem cells in the, co- in the cord. That's the reason why, aside from collecting the cord blood, we also uh, cut the umbilical cord and then we send that because that is a source of uh, epithelial stem cells and mesenchymal stem cells, yes. The epithelial cells can give rise to skin and, uh, and cornea, so you can use it for burns, for ulcers, and to regenerate the cornea. And then the mesenchymal stem cells can give rise to bone, cartilage, fibrous tissue, so you can use it for those applications. Amazing, we're learning so much! Yeah. <laughs> and what are the potential applications of the different types of stem cells? Well, the other diseases that are being investigated for stem cell therapy are numerous. Uh, diabetes, for one, which is a very common disorder worldwide and very high uh, incidence in the Philippines because of our sugar and <laughs> carbohydrate consumption. <laughs> Well, they're investigating stem cell therapy for that. Also for Parkinson's uh, disease, because that's uh, an abnormality in the release of neurotransmitters uh, of dopamine release in the brain, so they can use stem cells to generate the release of dopamine. And also for spinal cord injuries, you know, they can regenerate the uh, spinal cord tissue, the neural tissue, using stem cells. Even with um, traumatic brain disorders, they can regenerate the brain tissue using stem cells, as well as um, for cardiac um, uh, injuries or uh, heart disease, ischemic heart disease, where there's a, 
an um, abnormality or an atrophy or damage of the myocardial tissue, they can regenerate the myocardial tissue using stem cells. So Doc, how does cord life collect and actually process the whole umbilical cord lining? In collecting the cord blood, an informed consent is necessary from the patient. And then a kit is given either to the husband, and if he forgets, <laughs> there's always a kit in the hospital <laughs> because you don't know how husbands are. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and then, um, so with that kit, the obstetrician, after delivery of the baby, um, puts the needle into the, the umbilical vein and then and then the, um, the cord blood is collected by gravity into a closed bag and where there is heparin so that the blood won't clot. Yeah, so when, you, when you've collected a, a, a good amount of um, at least 400 cc of blood, then we, we, we pack that away. And it's stable in room temperature up to 36 hours, so the cord blood, um, yes, the cord life representative comes to pick it up and brings it to their facility in Quezon City. And there, they they treat it like gold, you know, they... <laughs> yes. And they and they separate the batches so that um, they don't put everything in uh, in. No mix ups. Yes, yeah, not everything in one bag, so that you know if something happens, so that you still have uh, you have a backup, right? <laughs> And, uh, and then, so they process it and they, um, they determine if there's any contamination, if there's adequate amount of, um, um, of cells. And then they cryopreserve it in, in these um, uh, freezing tanks where they keep them frozen at minus 190 degrees. Wow. Imagine. Yeah. <laughs> it's, that, it's that safe. That's right. Yeah. So in the collection of the, of the cord itself, we just make sure to clamp and cut at least six inches of the cord. And then we put that in the container that Cord Life provides. And then that is brought to the facility. Again, it's processed uh, in such a way that they, they cut it up into very small tissues and then they put it in several batches so that in case you just need a little bit, you don't need to unfreeze the whole batch, right? So you can also test the viability of the stem cells by just taking one portion instead of throwing out everything. <laughs> so, Doctora, thank you so much for enlightening us. I mean, we're so happy with Cord Life, and I'm sure a lot of moms and dads who are watching this are finally understanding the science behind it. This has been so insightful for, for both yeah. of us. And even though we actually are Cord, cord Life moms, yeah. I learned so much. Yeah, it's so nice to hear it from a doctor. Exactly. Because I think, especially for you, with all your life experience, you've encountered so many cases already. That's why she can really say, no, you know, we have to invest Definitely. in something like this. Definitely. I want to get pregnant just to collect my cord blood. <laughs> okay, we will wait for that, Doc. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Doc. <laughs>
you only have to do is that decision to learn like what we're doing now you're listening here this is really learning and you keep learning because that will hone you you don't need to get whatever you hear you just need to get what is helpful and you think it's good for your family the judgment will be yours but these are the important areas that i believe from my own experience as a mother from my expertise is very critical in parenting and being a mother first is we need to understand our children i tell moms hindi porke pinanganak natin ang bata kilala agad natin sila kailangan natin kilalanin ang bawat bata at hindi hindi pare-pareho ang mga anak natin so we have to understand each of them at the same time we have to accept and do not compare them because comparing later on as they grow old will you know give them a lot of hurts and frustrations okay another one we need to equip ourselves with the parenting skills ano yung mga bagay na dapat nating alam kung paano magdisiplina ng mga anak and then uh, another important thing that i really advocate is that we need to balance well who we are as a person and how we are as a mom by taking care of ourselves ang tendency kasi natin, lumaki tayo na ang mga magulang natin, ang mothers natin sinasabi na hindi mo na naalagaan ang sarili mo. But you know, the emotional health of a person, especially a mother who's always like a headless chicken running from one task to another, is that to take care of oneself. We cannot depend on our husband, our partner, our children to take care of us. We have to do it along the way because we cannot give what we don't have. Okay? So as I mentioned, understanding children. Let me just explain to you uh, two points that you need to look into in understanding children. One is the temperament. You need to learn the temperament of your child. Ano tong temperament ato? May tatlong tinatawag na temperament. Meron bata pag kapanganak pa lang, halos hindi umiyak. Ang tawag dito easy child. Yung patulugin mo tulog agad. Okay? Ang gandang, ang sarap nilang alagaan. Yan yung low maintenance kasi konting tapik mo, tulog na yan. Another child is the slow to warm up. Slow to warm up means pag may nakakita ng ibang tao, iiyak but eventually they go with other people. They are not used to new circumstances, new surroundings, but eventually when you pep talk them, when you prepare them, after a while, they adjust easily. Ito yung mahira. Pag ang temperament ng anak nyo ay the difficult child, ito yung mga bata na kahit na we hours in the morning, umiiyak. At saka ito yung kahit parang hindi mo makita yung pattern nung bata sa pagtulog kasi gusto niya laging nakakling, laging umiiyak, umalis ka, umiiyak, pagbalik mo, umiiyak pa rin. They are, they're a really difficult child. And temperament is inborn. So what do you do? Kung ganito yung anak mo, especially if it's slow to warm up or difficult, you have to bond well. You have to really have an emotional bond with your child so that your child, kahit anong temperament niya, alam niya na hindi nagkulang sa akin yung nanay ko. You have to do your role. We have to do our role. I have an easy child and I had a slow to warm up baby. Growing up, I stopped comparing them because what, what, what might work for my eldest did not work for my Second, so I have to get to know and to understand. So if you're working that maternity leave, make the most of that. Get to know the temperament of your child. Pakiramdaman nyo what are the patterns. It's really child-led parenting. Another one, as they grow old, you need to look into their learning style. Pag natututo na sila at toddlerhood, makikita mo may mga bata. Like my son when he was a toddler, he just liked listening to stories. Because he's an auditory learner. He learns through listening. And then some kids, iupo mo dyan, panoorin ka, okay. Pagbasa sila ng book, they don't like to listen to you, but they're looking at the pictures. When they learn, they look. They learn well by looking. These are the visual learning style. Kids who learn best when they're watching, when they see something. The challenge is that, if your child is the kinesthetic, These are the kids who learn through movements. They dance, they play, do you need to pretend? They move, they are the athletic type. My son is an auditory boy. When I tell him, he gets it. Even if he's watching uh, uh, shows for kids, he just listens and then he picks it up. My daughter, she's very kinesthetic. We have to play make-believe. When we read stories, it has to be with movements and feelings. So along the way, 
it will serve you well if you know the learning style of your child because you know best how to approach them. Hindi na kayong parang, why is it not working? Sa panganay ko, pwede. Sa pangalawa, hindi. As I mentioned, hindi pwedeng pare-pareho because they are really different. So that's two important matters, the temperament and the learning style. And this is the very critical thing, your parenting style. I'm not going to talk about the parenting skill, but check how you were raised. Are there healthy and healthy patterns in your family? If the patterns are unhealthy, make a conscious decision to cut it and let your family experience the best of you. How do you envision your family? How do you envision you as a mother reading your children? Pero na kailangan natin i-check, baka self-fulfilling prophecy. Because meron mga mommy, hindi ko ito na-experience yung maliit ako eh, so dapat ma-experience ng anak ko. Just example, my kids, I want to send my kids to ballet. I want my kids to experience this. Pero paano kung ayaw ng bata? So you have to check, kaninong issue ba to akin o kanya? Kaninong need ba to kay mommy or sa bata? You have to check that. So you have to check also the helpful patterns. What you learned before, I learned the value of hard work, diligence in my own family. These are the exact values that I want to pass on to my children. So, you need the right parenting skills to arm you with that. So, what are these three parenting skills? Our generation and the generation before us grew up in authoritarian parenting. These are the classic parenting styles. Diana Bombrin's parenting style. One is authoritarian. Ito yung the child follows the parents, period. Bawal magsalita ang bata, sumunod ka lang. The children are not heard. They just follow. Pag hindi ka sumunod, may palo. Pag hindi ka sumunod, may punishment. I think a lot of us can relate to that. If you grew up in authoritarian parenting, you have the chances that either you be an authoritarian parent or you think that I don't want my kids to to experience this. Ibibigay ko lahat sa kanila. So you go, you swing to the other direction, what which is what we call the permissive parenting style. What is this? The parent follows the child. Sinusunod ng magulang ang bata. Daddy, I don't want to eat the dinner. I don't want to eat vegetables. I want hot dogs. Okay, get hot dog. I don't want to study. I want to watch TV. I want to play with the iPad. Okay, ito, para masaya. Many parents now, you know, I notice in my in my practice is that many parents are afraid of their kids. They're afraid of their kids na baka daw umiyak at magalit. It's okay because they need to learn. We cannot be too permissive while they're younger. Remember, seven and below is the best formation stage. That's where the disciplining happens. If they pick the right disciplining skills, later on, it will be fine-tuning. But if they don't pick up the, un- the right ones, the unhealthy ones is what we gave them, we might have a problem later on in life. As mothers, we need to be more aware that there is such thing as the third parenting skill na napakahalaga and that the parenting style is that me as a parent is the one doing to my own children and what I'm encouraging parents. That's what we call the authoritative parenting. Yan yung democratic. Like in our country, we are a democratic country. The, the government doesn't just decide, but it has to be a collaborative effort. So the child and the parent collaborate and cooperate with each other. The parent lead, but in consultation with the children. As simple as, okay, you have to eat vegetables, but I don't like vegetables. Okay, if you don't want to eat your vegetable, I'm not giving you other options. Because you are, it's important for you to eat vegetable, or you can only have your dessert if you eat the vegetable. So the parent did not force they put an equivalent consequence to whatever the child will say or how will they react so democratic you don't need shouting you don't need spanking you just need to put the rules you just need to put accompanying consequences and this is something that i really encourage parents to look into put the appropriate consequences as i tell parents uh, we don't really go for uh, threats. Threats are not healthy, especially if it's not true. Kaya maraming batang lumalaking takot sa doktor because sinatakot ng parents na bibigyan ng injection. But it's not true, right? Because we don't have injections all the time. So we need to tell our children na if you do this, this is the equivalent. If you don't follow now, then this is the equivalent because that naturally happens. There's an accompanying consequences in life. So children need, but it's 
entails a lot of awareness for the parents and parents you need to communicate properly because the democratic way is really espousing on the proper communication skill for moms you know your pregnancy is very important that little person inside you you thought they're just sleeping no but they're listening to your feelings they know what you're feeling they are attuned with what's happening to you and it's at the every fiber of their being already so now if it's the best time for you to reassess yourself if you have personal issues if you have personal struggles and then work on yourself first so that when your child comes you are prepared not just the physical preparation but you are prepared to be emotionally attuned to the child that you will have soon Hi mommies, I'm Dr. Angel Gonzalez, a pediatrician from the Cardinal Santos Medical Center. I'm here to talk about the newborn care, which will help you in your everyday life. Okay, how do you get started? Do not hesitate in asking for help. You may ask the help of your moms, your parents, or your partner in life. And of course, you must do the proper handling for your babies. How do you handle your baby? Make sure you wash your hands or use 70% alcohol in cleaning your hands. Second, you must handle your baby well by supporting the head and neck. The head is the biggest part of the baby. You don't shake your baby too much. You, must sh you might be shaking the brain and cause damage inside or you might um, cause the bleeding inside the brain. Breastfeed your baby. You may breastfeed as often as possible. There is no hard and fast rule in breastfeeding your baby. You may breastfeed feed by demand or every two hours every two to three hours a crying baby first as a mother it's your job to figure it out maybe baby is hungry so you may start feeding your baby once uh, he started crying if he doesn't stop maybe figure it out maybe baby just want to suck something or simply ba maybe baby is lonely you might want to cuddle or you may carry baby at this time or Maybe baby is wet, check the diaper if he needs to be changed and um, simply baby might just want to change place, you may take him around the room or just cuddle baby. Another thing is bathing baby. How often do you bath your baby? In our country, since it's a temperate country, you may bath baby as often as twice or thrice a day. It doesn't matter as long as baby gets comfortable. You may bath baby any time of the day, could be in the morning or evening. You may start bathing baby by washing the head first and then followed by the body using a sponge bath with a bathtub. Which part to wash first when bathing baby? You may start washing the sensitive areas like the genital parts or the face. What to wear? Um, for babies, you may clothe baby with white cotton which are very comfortable. You may apply mild lotion as well after bathing baby and there's no need to, to put on heavy perfumes or powders. How about feeding? How often should you feed your baby? When feeding baby, like what I've said a while ago, there's no hard and fast rule. You may feed baby by demand or usually it's every two to three hours. What to eat or not to eat during breastfeeding? When breastfeeding, mommies, you should take nutritious foods like green leafy vegetables, increase fluid intake. You may take in multivitamins. And what not to eat? Avoid high ca caffeine drinks. Avoid taking in dairy products when you have lactose intolerance. How about the cord? This is oftentimes a question of mommies. How to clean the cord? Use 70% alcohol when cleaning the cord. Fully sew cotton ball with 70% alcohol and wipe it around the cord area. You expect the cord area to fall off within two weeks after birth. For hygiene, change baby's diaper as soon after bowel movement. Clean the genital area using soap and water or baby wipes. You may apply brush cream over the genital parts. Expose it air dry when you have diaper rash and use mild soap. How do you clean the mouth area? Every after milk, you may use clean, clean cotton balls, wrap it on your finger, 
and use double distilled water by cleaning the gum area every after feeding. Or simply, you may give water every after milk feeding. For babies' checkup, follow up with your pediatrician, especially in case of fever for babies 6 months old or below. Babies at this age should not have fever or temperature of 37.8 and above. Have the immunizations updated, especially those recommended by the Department of Health. And have your baby screened, like the newborn screening and hearing screening as well, especially when you're still in the hospital. Metascreen was first offered in Cord Life India last October 2013 and was subsequently launched in Hong Kong, Philippines, and Indonesia last 2014. Metascreen has a very comprehensive coverage of more than 100 inborn errors of metabolism. Inborn errors of metabolism is a rare genetic disorder where the affected baby lacks certain enzymes that maintain normal bodily metabolic function, causing the buildup of toxic substances or deficiency of critical substances. Although IEMs are very rare, when taken cumulatively, the incidence rate is quite high. For Filipinos, about 1 in every 1,160 babies is expected to be born with a metabolic disorder. That is why early detection and early intervention is very important. Many of these metabolic disorders can cause serious developmental issues and lifelong complications such as mental retardation, physical disability, and in some instances, death if it is left untreated. Screening your newborn for metabolic disorders will facilitate early treatment and prevent long-term detrimental effects to your baby's health. Metascreen is an age-expanded screening. You may screen your baby for from 45 hours of birth until 6 months of age. It is a simple and painless urine test using a filter paper into the diaper that will not cause harm or discomfort to your baby. Using advanced technology, accurate and timely screening results within 2 weeks to enable treatment if necessary. In summary, Metascreen is a simple, painless and non-invasive urine test for babies 0 to 6 months old. It provides highly reliable, accurate, and timely results and is capable of detecting more than 100 metabolic disorders from your baby. Early detection and prevention is very critical in avoiding lifelong and potentially fatal effects of this IEM. Metascreen was first offered in Cord Life India last October 2013 and was subsequently launched in Hong Kong, Philippines, and Indonesia last 2014. Metascreen has a very comprehensive coverage of more than 100 inborn errors of metabolism. Inborn errors of metabolism is a rare genetic disorder where the affected baby lacks certain enzymes that maintain normal bodily metabolic function, causing the buildup of toxic substances or deficiency of critical substances.